The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everybody. Let me turn my music off. There you go. And I need line. We good? Line, where are you? Say hi to me in line, please. Hmm. All right, one more time. Nothing. I'm sending you guys a message in line. Anybody get it? Hmm. Oh, I will log out and log in. Hang on. There we go. Weird. Morning, everybody. Hey, Mary, how are you? Um, yeah, I'm just so 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 this morning, Ouija. Um, I I typed it, didn't do anything for me. I had to reset. Anyway, we're good now. Um, just didn't sleep for a while last night. Um, Mary, how stuffed are you at work? I found something really cool but it'll take a little bit of work if you're stuffed I'll uh... you do have time? okay I found every single presentation I ever did for money show the little bastards made a web page just for that it's my material, not theirs. And put up every slide and then took my comments from the video and overlaid it on the slides. I'm thinking we just take the slides. Well, that's great, David. Um, hi, David. How are you? Um, I don't know. Do you have time as well? Oh, it's okay. I mean, I did them at Money Show. It's just, you know, more exploitation. That's fine. I don't mind because I do have the ability. It's my 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 material. I'm just going to take them off. So uh, anybody that's interested in helping, um, that way Mary won't have to do it. It's 257 pages. So, but Mary, you can decide where you want, where we should put it. Yeah, I appreciate all the great thoughts and purse. Thank you. It made a huge difference. I will, Mary. I'll send it to you, Mary, and uh, and I'll send you anybody's uh, email that wants to help. And you can decide what email, what uh, web page you want to put it on. I'll give you a list of web pages. Anyway, um, if you weren't here on Friday, today is going to be kind of a. You get to look inside of the head of. Uh, I got to move that. I can't see. Hang on. I know you guys can't see it, but I can. Um, look inside the head of a professional trader that's had some time off. And okay, well that's a pain in the. Just a second. 
Let's try it over here. I guess that's better. Yeah, there we go. Um, professional trader that's had some time off. And um, as I told you guys uh, on Wednesday and Friday, um, I had a, about a 12 hour period where uh, the one doctor I trusted didn't think I was going to make it. And frankly, I didn't really think I was going to make it. So that on top of uh, the people, not necessarily my family, but the people around me that have been around me a long time that, that I trust, you know, the Queen, um, Prince Mahmoud, um, several other people, um, they really have been worried and their opinion was that I should basically just just be done. Um, take the parachute, take the kids, take my wife, move to the estate in Ireland and just, just be done trading. And uh, just enjoy what's left. And so, you know, it wears on you after a while and I'm thinking about all my contemporaries. They're all done or gone or dead. It's just me. Um, Richard trades a little bit here and there, but um, not much. Um, and everybody else is, as I said, either retired or dead for a while. So, um, I finally decided, um, you know, the fund is closed for the year. I finally decided that I would uh, just take a couple trades casually and let the market tell me whether or not I was still interested. And I thought maybe what I would do is just teach. But I don't know that it's the same if you're not trading at the same time. So I wasn't really sure what I was going to do. So I watched my son make that trade, or a little bit. I, I didn't see all of it, but uh, because it was mostly in bed. But well, I definitely got to get rid of that. Goodbye. And... Um, So I was a little apprehensive. So about 10 days goes by and um, started to get out of bed, started to look at the market here and there and nothing really hit me. And um, I'll show you a trade I made. Uh, this is the first trade. And um, the, f the, the funny part is I had bad data over here. didn't impact the trade at all. And uh, I've told you guys that before. Trade what you see because you never actually know how your data is relative to the market. So I have since gone back and borrowed some data and cleaned this up. And I was curious at the time whether or not it made a difference. And actually it made absolutely no difference. Do I find trading stressful or enjoyable or both? Um, no, I... This one, I was apprehensive, Gina, but in general, I don't, I'm never stressed, and um, I'm very enjoyable, and probably get something that you guys don't. I'm still in a fair amount of pain, and when I took this trade, I was in a lot of pain, even even beyond the painkillers that I was on, and it was pretty strong stuff. I was still in a lot of pain, but the adrenaline that trading gives me, I, all, that all disappears. Everything disappears. The bet you know it's, um, which is why when I first got tri when I first got sick in 1985 and I was incredibly ill, I came back after six months. Um, nobody thought I was going to live. I came back for six months. I had lost about 50 percent of my body weight, and um, I just found the more I traded, the better I felt. And when I wasn't trading, I felt terrible. So I traded 80 hours a week and really, unfortunately, lost myself in the trading. So that's a bad thing as well. That's as addictive as anything. So um, this time I was more apprehensive, although the adrenaline, once I got in the position, was nice um, while I was watching it. I didn't watch it all the time. So I didn't think you would still get adrenaline after trading so long. Ouija, I think it's more that I hadn't, I hadn't traded for a while, and as I said, everybody around me was basically... You know, I had a hell of a run. You're on. You've got seven years now of uh, triple digits. What's the point? Why don't you just, you know, cash your chips in? I mean, the estate in Ireland is 
unbelievable and we haven't spent any time there um, I just give it up you know 60 years old been trading 45 years enough it's in your blood now a new balance between family and trades yeah I, I I'm gonna be as I said I've uh, I basically resigned from Stanford and MIT and although they won't they haven't accepted they basically just put me on sabbatical I'm just not gonna do it and um, you know I'm gonna spend uh, I have a lot of healing to do and I'm probably gonna have to another surgery but uh, once that's finished um, I basically like to just spend a lot more time with the family the trading will not be as fast um, although I don't think I've been I don't think my life's been dominated with trading for a while in fact I think I've traded better except for those periods when I was pushing gold and pushing oil um, and those take uh, quite a bit of focus especially when you're at the right at that nexus but in general the trading has been fairly casual and and um, right now these tools the tools that I've developed um, that traders these days they don't have the ability to trade in the markets to develop the tools that I have um, really suit these markets um, which is one reason why the central bankers that know me would love to have me out of the market because um, these, this is a sweet spot for me so I don't really you know in the back of my mind I really don't think it's uh, the right time to walk away and uh, so I thought let me take some trades and just see if I'm right or if maybe I'm just not up to it so let's take a look at a trade today and now if you were not all of you are in the evening sessions but the evening sessions and Sean's trade um, basically highlight what I consider to be extremely key concepts nothing nothing funny nothing three and four and fifth dimension kind of thing nothing uh, that's in the back of my mind is wild thoughts that some of you get and most of you don't get but some of you uh, try and get um, these are things that you these traits are basic and I think you need to master what I've shown Wednesday Friday and in this trade again today these are I think they're simple maybe it's the wrong word but they are um, they're vital I think and I think this uh, this type of trade setup if you're not doing this you need to practice more all right nothing more important to you than fan with a family without you most of us will not flower yep I Pete I'm not going anywhere I'm really not I, I just this is what I am hobby only if you can do it I agree with Pete um, I must have missed that one but um, this should not be a hobby for this for you guys this should be uh, total focus BJ and Pat asked me to let oh yeah how's Pat they're out I know they're I know they're uh, they sent me an email saying that they were uh, they're not he, they're not in this area but um, but they are out west and they're looking and if they if they move where I think they're moving I'm gonna have to go visit so maybe we'll make a trip together David but uh, yeah I do miss them so well let's let's see if they buy the place if not I know some great places in Arizona that are for sale that they'd enjoy uh, especially thanks to Shane he and a few others have schooled us while you're out that's great well I appreciate you guys helping each other um, I think we lost uh, well it's hard to tell um, until we get going this month I know people had problems on Friday but it looks like we may have lost you know three or four members but you know if people don't want a beer that's fine I, I want people that uh, that want to get it that want to nail it I don't want people that hey I you know I, I understand that it's difficult um, if I'm out um, but you should know that when I'm not out I will be here um, and as 
I said, I'm still in a fair amount of pain, but it's all right. When I start to teach, it, it's like, you know, there's adrenaline when I teach, it goes away. So I don't, I don't mind. So let's, let's go back to trading and see what we can see. So when I look at this, you notice I don't squeeze in. I'm not interested in what's back here. I'm really not. It's meaningless to me. It's not that much data. I understand that. Um, I'm not going to measure, but I'll bet that's only about 100 bars. But, um, you know, I've got a fair, a fair idea here. I've got, you know, this. That's probably far too long. Let's make that three. And, um, you know, if you want, you can do this which tells you it's probably not going to last forever. Well, let's do one. No, nope, I guess two. Or, of course, you can just do the obvious, which is what I did on mine originally. Well, it's even more than that. And you can think about it that way. You get a door down here. You can think about these triple tops here. And let's make those same thing. So this is not going to hold forever. In the meantime, we've definitely got. door down here up here I'm not so sure All right and as we make here we're making we're definitely making lower highs and okay this is after the fact this is what I'm starting to watch otherwise you of course could have done what we talked about, just simple Amos. And let's take a look. 406. Yep. So I use a buck and a half. And this is a would give you about six ticks on top and a one buck for the entry. This would have worked if you were watching and seeing it that way and let's see if it has any risk reward um, just for chuckles something like that if you want to hear that's bare minimum if you want to hear I mean you got three and a half to one four to one it's okay nothing wrong with that picking up the change Looks like high shoulder weak reaction. Yeah. So, hi Johnny. So, um, you could also do this, and again, all three that I did Wednesday, Friday, and again today, you could certainly do this. Right? And by definition, Let's think about it. There's no magic here. By definition, if you have a top shoulder weak reaction, you're going to get one, two, three, aren't you? By definition. Now, I don't actually remember Amos ever talking about three drives or whatever. Actually, back then, just so you know, it was called three little Indians. It wasn't called three drives. But, of course, now that's politically incorrect, so... People have changed the name, and I, I don't. I don't want to get. I've gotten some nasty emails from people in the past over weird things, so I'll go with the three drive thing. But the original uh, manuscript, which I still think we're going to put out, um, talks about three little Indians. So, whatever. Uh, down here, I mean, you could go one, two, three. I don't know. I think that's kind of stretching it. But you could go one, two, and one of these. Of course, 
idea is going to give. So let's let's see what we get. I mean, I could I can see the most instru important structure here for me is um, the door that's been tested, and it looks to me like we're going to test it again. Does that make sense to everybody? If this door breaks, what would you expect? Yeah, new lows, obviously, range extension, sure, but what? Parabolic? Okay, I'll take that. Can you envision where it might go? Double the range, why not? So, let's just think when we trade. And you don't have to mark it in, but you know, if you're just learning let's do about like that. If you're just learning to visualize, go ahead and put it in. Okay? Let's see what the market gives us. So again, I wasn't here to take this trade, but let's put the gonna go in there. Six and a half. So you can see would have had no problem at all. Okay. So let's see if it pays off. I like this. It makes a new high, closes lower. We had no problem being filled. Wouldn't reach at all. Now you can see got more than a third on top. It's exactly how you should be using your gonna go. This is extremely important. How do you use your gonna go? How do you allocate the risk versus the noise? Study, 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 practice, practice, practice. That bar, by the time you see that bar, it's over, right? Gina, you cannot wait for this confirmation. There's no way in. Does that make sense? You have to see the shoulder form and then watch it coming out of the hole and be thinking this. You have to do this. That has to be in your mind. And you need to put an order in. You need to go, okay, look, because if it takes this high out, you're going to be wrong, but it's just one stop. So, if you're interested at all, and you see the top and the shoulder, and the idea is, you know, I think this might top out up here, then you have to think, well, where is it likely to go? It's likely to be a weak reaction. It's likely to be here or lower. I'll put my order in. Because if you're waiting to see what's going to happen, even if you would waited for this bar and looked, you're not going to get in. The confirmation is the structure at weak reaction, no? Well, the confirmation is this break right here. But it's too late, right? Even if you think this bar right here, where we made the new high and then closed lower, by the time you see it, you're going to miss it, right? So you have to be a step ahead of action. You have to think. That's why I just said, if you think it might double the range, put it on the chart because you need to be a step ahead. All right, let's see what we get. This is not a trade I took. I was already, this is about when I walked in. So and it hadn't made the third top, but, um, you know, just getting my feet, my beak wet. Any thoughts between two and three, I'm often too early there. 
You mean here? Pete? So, if that's where you mean, trading anywhere low, just draw your line of maximum excursion and trading anywhere lower, putting an order in here, for example, is a waste of your time. Here's the way to think about it. Even if you can't envision, you, you didn't see the line of maximum excursion, you can't envision where a three is going to form, take the go no go, hang a third of it, and put the order in. And you know, if you don't get filled, you don't get filled, but that's what you're willing to risk on this, sorry. So just hang it, right? Just like that. No other there's no other way for you to get filled. Uh, you could do this, and in this case, of course, you would have survived, but if you're going to grab this, you might as well do it correctly. Hang a third up there, at least five pips, five ticks in this case, and put your order in. Can you use the same logic to go long two off the bottom? <coughs> sure. Um, here, but here's the thing, Aaron. As you look at this, which do you think is likely to hold? One second, David. I'm going to read that. But Aaron, which which do you think the door is obvious? Well, here's what I'd say. See, Aaron, we're used to looking at things that are sloped at this class. But 99.999% of the market doesn't look at sloped lines. They look at horizontal lines. The one line everybody is going to have on their chart is all these touches down here. And lots of people are collecting here. Now, it is the case that there may be somebody that can collect enough that people are getting long, right? And it, it's been paying to get along. Even when it comes down, it's not taking out the low. The shorts are seeing lower highs. They don't have a horizontal line. So people are collecting down here. There's nothing wrong. If you see this, then you definitely do this. Right? So, David said, as you've taught, the go-no-go -go is the first point of mapping. If you have it on there, you may be reminded to be ready. A absolutely. If you see a structure, and I don't think there's any ro anything wrong with putting it up on the top and putting it down on the bottom, and then deciding, okay, which one do I want to spend? Or maybe watch the action a little bit to make your decision. But the problem here. If you're a little iffy, as this comes up and you see it closing on the highs, now that that's a nice bar. But if you're waiting, see it closing on the highs, you you might get talked out of it, but maybe not. So let's see what it does on the downside. Is there a higher door at 40170? Here? Um, yeah, but I don't, I don't, I mean, that's very, that, that, that would be like putting, um, a stop underneath here. That's very minor. Where are people, where are people going to put their, where are people, where's people, people are going to put their faith in one thing, and it's this fat, look, look at it, get punched and punched and punched. So why go up here? I mean, unless you want to front run this. Why bother to even look at this? This is what's going to draw your eyes right here. On the downside, this is what's going to... Your eyes going to get drawn right here. I, I don't know if it's too inside. We're going to see it because we're actually looking for something like this, something slope. But most people are just going to see that big, fat, horizontal bottom. So, is this a high nexus 
If this is a high nexus, then is expectation to take out the lows? Um, I wouldn't rate this a four or a, this, this short. I wouldn't rate this a four or five um, because I do think you have, I think you can make the argument that there's a door here and maybe you want to play the door. I, if you want to get short, I can see the logic for being short, especially. Okay, but see how it kind of, let's go back here. How about right here? I think now it looks almost 50-50, don't you? Now it's, what vision do you have? And yet, you might already be thinking about weak reaction or bottom, shoulder, strong reaction. You might be thinking about both sides. So, in essence, you do have one, two, three, and one, two, three. We haven't seen three yet on either side. Now, if you have the vision that the upside is the, what you want to sell up here, you're filled and three holds. When you see that bar, of course, you're happy. Now, if you're thinking about the downside, when you see one, two, three, and three holds and you see this bar you might get waved off of this idea how about that maybe maybe not it depends on how strong your vision is I, again I don't think this is a four or five I would want to get a stop run at the lows getting short here I would want to get a stop run at the lows getting shorter I don't know what you mean Johnny you wouldn't sell that is what you're telling me that's okay. Well, you want to get short after this? I don't want to get short down here. I got no interest in that. At best, the move's half over, right? If we think it double the range, you're getting short at double the range, at, at half the double the range. I want the whole thing. I think he wants to see the pain of stops getting hit. Oh, I get that. But it, as long as he's not getting short down there, if he just... Okay, I would want to get a stop run at the lows getting short. I, I, I don't, I know you, I think I know what you're trying to say, but I'm not, I'm not going to put the words in your mouth. So if you can redo it, but let's, let's move forward. So, I mean, this has all the signs of people that are, sh that are long having to bail again. Now that's a nasty bar. So you've got what I consider to be this bar right here and this one this area right here and this close if you're tape reading I don't know if I at that point at this point I don't know that I want to trade here now if you did you're not stopped out it's okay still have the door we'll see what the door does and there's not one buyer at the door. How about that? That's unusual. You usually get at least a couple a couple bounces there. So R3 R3 got busted on the downside, right? And you can see the volatility increase, right? And you can see there were a lot of people selling, probably because they had to sell. And when nobody showed up, it became very illiquid. This is how much 189 trades take. And it just became more and more illiquid as we got down here. People had to sell. Any role for drawing the median line? Uh, I mean, why? But, you know, you can draw it. Uh, fa in fact, I'll even leave it below. But usually in these uh, top shoulder 
weak reactions. Um, you, you really got, if you think about it, until 3 gets busted, what do we have? Take a look at the tops and the bottoms. And Ouija says it's 8 consecutive bars of lower highs, lower lows, and lower closes. Yeah, do you want to buy into that? So, what do you have before this gets busted? Take a look at the formations. What do we have? Top and bottom. We've got contracting pivots. Very good. Or a range is another way. But even more important, we've got contracting pivots, right? So I'm not wild about drawing median lines and contracting pivots. Because what do we know about contracting pivots? There's one thing we know for sure. We don't know if they're going to break to the top. We don't know if they're going to break to the top. But what do we know? They are going to break, right? So, well, it's not that inside action, it's not till remain contracted until they, they don't. It's they are going to break. So, so, that means these are not major highs and lows. And I really like to draw much more off of majors, yeah, than I do insiders. I mean, sometimes I'll use insiders. Right. I'm not sure that this is going to give me the probable path of price, but let's follow it and see if it does. I'll leave it on there. I didn't draw it on there, but it doesn't mean it won't give us something interesting. All right, first wide range bar, it does give us the median line of the lower parallel. That's nice. You can see the median line was useless, didn't even get retested. That shows you how weak this is. Now let's see what happens. Travels along the median line, so that's good. Uh, the parallel. Okay, then we zoom it you can see it accelerating again accelerating again all right a little bit of a bounce here And starting to head lower again. Okay. First thing that comes to your mind when you see this. So if you put that warning line on there, David, wasn't at least so far it wasn't a bad indication. And here's double our range right here. Everybody see it? Yeah, it looks a little horizontal, doesn't it? Sorry. just still so bad at drawing right now. I mean, I'm always bad, but I'm worse. It looks a little bit horizontal. It's slowed down. We're getting multiple tops and bottoms. We're near the warning line. So David, I don't know, maybe I should draw these more often. And we're relatively close to double our range. So our hunch that double the range might be important. Okay. I'm not ready to jump in and go long. Would you take profit here? If I was short, um, sure, I'd be looking for uh, some, I mean, if I draw on the median line like David suggested, I certainly would. I'd be somewhere around this double the range. You know, you've got, at this point, you've got about 8 to 1. And I I basically like to take profit at about 85 or 90 percent of what I'm looking for, right? So, you know, I'm I'm not a pig. And we're vertical, right? Actually I've been I've been using the word parabolic, let's stick with it. So we went parabolic at some point when it slows. That's the area where you want to be sitting there with the catcher's mitten saying, thank you. Would you move stop to above horizontal structure here? You mean above here, right here? 
save it? No. If you're going to do that, just take the money and run. Just take the money. You got to eat the one. The only place you can, I don't even like it, but the only thing you can do is put a stop up here at noise, which is, you know, um, which is what? Where's my damn study thing? Hang on. There it is. You go away for. We'll just put one up there. 1.3. Well, it's pretty noisy, actually. So, you know, we might actually have started with uh, two. Let's see what it was over here. Yeah, it's it's pretty noisy. So, I mean, you're gonna have about a buck and a half up here. So, just for chuckles. You don't want it if you're gonna put it right by right by the current price just take your money walk away be happy you got you know eight nine ten to one whatever if you're thinking about you know I need to minimize my risk just take your money you can't put it above here until we stop here and then take out the lows at that point you can consider that but right now you're basically just it's fear I've been noticing that parabolic seems to start in the horizontal area. That's why we're studying it, Aaron, and not necessarily when horizontal is broken. Similar to this, is that common? Like buyers run out and it drops, then stops, hit, take it further. Yeah, let's, and we're going to see another example of that. That when, if you, if you study Friday, you'll see the same thing. And if you were in Wednesday's class, you'll see the same thing. Is that there are clues inside of horizontal, if you pay attention, that sometimes they're subtle and sometimes you can't make the decision to buy but the clues are there now the earlier you can see the clues on a regular basis and they become repeatable Hobbs you're crazy he's jumping in and out of the cat cage like a going back and forth makes sense finding so many more clues this round of study. Okay, so it will eventually drive your entries further and further to the left, Aaron. Um, but a lot of times, it's only a matter of pips. It's not like it, you're going to miss a third of the move or half the move. But you'll also understand, and you'll have much more time to plan. All right. So, and you'll see, you'll see in this particular entry when the trade comes up. I'm not I'm not exactly fast in this one okay I mean I'm a little rusty but I really think this is a great place to enter as was Friday's was I can't remember I don't remember Friday so I won't talk about it Wednesday's was was uh, again one of those you had plenty of time to see it and wait for the for price to get to your entry won't comment on on Friday since it wasn't my trade and I don't really I remember was a nice trade but I don't remember all the particulars so I don't want to misspeak but um, on this one you'll see that there's plenty of time to see the clues put some other things together and then you know put your catcher's mitt down and it comes right into the mitt which is how you want to trade and if it doesn't get there it doesn't get there that's okay put the mitt away and wait okay all right so we go horizontal now we bust out of horizontal so now, David, if we, we, now that we've busted out, if we take out this low, then you can put your stop above here. But we continue higher. So if you're, if you're actually considering it down in here, just go with your instinct and just take the money. Especially when you're at 8 or 10 to 1 for everybody here, including me. 8 or 9 or 10 to 1 and you start to get that ah, you know I'm in an area getting close to where it should get should stop and you start to get that itch just go to the market walk away you can always find another trade All right. so now you could put that stop up there if you want and I'll I'll throw it here that's about there or you can be up here all right, so now let's see what we get. 
now we made the warning line so pretty nice I'd say it's a pretty nice median line at this point I don't know how many of you use warning lines but but let's see what happens now so we touch the warning line and we immediately reverse off of it it is not much of a clue but start to train your eyes to look exactly for this a low and a higher low even if it gets busted start practicing looking for those the lows and a higher lows same thing on the top side right do you put in warning lines manually no um ensign just what do you draw an ensign johnny okay an ensign you can you can throw out as many as you want here while well, i'll show you real quick every you know if you're in trade station you just yeah you just the other thing you could do um i used to take before he put these on i, I talked to him to put these on just take it grab the fork drag it down a halfway and then copy it so you'd have a, a fork laying on a fork which you give it a warning line okay so you can same just do it manually johnny but here you see you can see i can do whatever interval i want but i'll you know i i remember having to manually draw every part of the pitchfork which is actually quite instructional having to start with the bc then yeah fork over fork is fine okay so get used to you see this bar close on its low you see this bar close on its high you see some action now i do see this and you can draw it in Okay, so we know one's gonna one's gonna give it up, right? But in the scheme of things, which am I more likely to be interested in? Am I interested in these lower highs? Think about it. If I'm short, am I interested? No, they're meaningless. I'm already short. If I'm not already short, am I going to sell down here? So you can go ahead and draw, but draw with a purpose. So I wouldn't get fixed. I mean, I like this frequency, but I wouldn't get fixated on it because what am I going to do with it anyway? Right? Now, I might be interested in a significant low if this turns out to be a significant low right so a low followed by a higher low might start me down the path of thinking about a move up does that make sense so I'm not telling you see this low see this higher low immediately get long I'm telling you, your eye should get used to, hey, look at this low that closes on its low. Now look at the instant reaction to the upside. Then we leave a higher low. Get used to looking for these because those are the small things that can start a move. Clues of a change. Exactly right, David. So... You can see it's not spectacular. Um, I probably have, I don't see what I can grab. Yeah, I think I can grab that. Hi, no Hobbs, you're gonna have to go play, I'm busy. But thanks for, thanks for coming. There we go. So, at the moment it's not a spectacular move, but it is slowly climbing out of the hole. Do you like the mirror bars forming the low? Um, yeah, no, no, that's that that would grab my eye, boy. Especially if I had if I had David's uh, warning line in here, 
you know, it's crystalline. It's exactly what I'd be looking for. Right? Expanding pivot, first new high out of horizontal, etc. Yeah, so there's everything to like here. I want it to take this out. Now, if you already have the idea, you know, you might be thinking about this line of maximum excursion. Now we, here's the bar right here. This says it all right here. See it? Fresh buyers. At that point, you have fresh buyers. But, I'm not going to buy up here. I'd buy back down here, or I'd miss the move, right? And here's the problem with buying down here. Let's look at our go-no-go. -no -go. There's really no structure. Once we start to lift out of here, I'll just leave that. Once we start to lift out of here, take a look. There's really there's no structure. Price has left us no structure. It's a continual line that's sloped, right? So it doesn't work. Are these fresh buyers breakout buyers and stops sitting behind the last pivot? Uh, let me ask, I'll ask you, Perry, can you expound on what you're asking me? Um, so are these fresh buyers breakout buyers? Um, some of them are breakout buyers, but there's lots of people that are still short. Okay, and they got a little nervous when they saw this curl. They got real happy. And by the way, people got, believe it or not, breakout, buy, breakout sellers are going to sell here. So some people got short in the hole here. Some other people saw this and got a little nervous. They didn't join the bail, but they got a little nervous. And when it came down here, they got happy. But as it starts to, you know, squirrel up again, they don't want to sit through it again. Okay. Yeah, this would be a boom movement, you no know, doubt about it. And the only way you're going to get to there or maybe in this area is by practicing moving, is seeing things closer and closer to the left, which is what we were talking about before. So Perry said, you said circle bar was key. I also paid attention to the bar just prior. Okay. Um, this bar here, yeah, but the, but, the, but the thank you it's done is when, of course, we take out this level right here because this is going to force the hands of people that are short. This bar right here. Okay? That bar just assumed a median line off the recent low. Okay. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna median line us to death, guys. I, I do want to stay in general with what I did. And go ahead and see what you can see, that's fine. But at some point if I continue to draw what other people are seeing, um, we're just going to get lost. So, actually, David, I need to... I'm looking. Uh, hang on, give me a second. I'm looking at my notes here because I want to get this right. Okay, so I so let me mark this so I don't get lost. I know I actually did have a median line in here, David, but not the one that you're thinking of, or not the one you thought of. And this was my A up here. There we go. All right, and the reason why is because I'm looking for major pivots, okay? So, yeah, we'll leave that much up there. All right, so this is the bar that says, hey, this is probably a major low. Does that make any sense to you guys? Given no structure to hide behind, would you have taken that boom, boom trade? Had you seen it? No. There's no, there's no... There, there is no structure. This isn't even, I mean, every once in a while I'll take this trade. We're not going to talk about this trade today. But some of you have seen me take this trade. Uh, what's the color I haven't used? Here we go.
and it's it's really not formed very well these bottom clusters then we get the poke below and then I'll buy right here and it'll look something like this and that's about as close to boom boom as I ever get but here I don't even think I would be tempted on this one okay but that's what it would look like okay if you want to be that if you can see it and you want to be that aggressive that's fine I think this one deserves more than 1.5 probably something like 1 1.8 18 ticks and again if you're going to take 18 ticks where is it likely to go where's your first problem the old door it's not the median line in fact David it did great down here here I'll leave though I'll leave the warning well no I got to take it off I'm just gonna delete the median line you'll see why okay so this is what I'm looking at right here this old door and let's make it solid now just so we can see it is the first problem So, if that's the first problem, and you're going to use 1.8, something about like that. So you're going to risk 185 to be, uh, I mean, it still works. That's 3 to 1. But that's an aggressive entry, guys. How many people would even, a lot of people wouldn't see it. How many, if you thought you could see it, how many okay David would you take it okay well you know what swing away I'm not gonna discourage you at all there are times I take it um, I, I, I actually call this David I have a name for this one I call this a t-ball trade just because I, I like those when I see them but I take them but if I take them I want more than three to one yeah I read some kind of like that yeah and <laughs> David's laughing here's the thing for me to take this trade, I have to think it's going to bust this. Old door is now center of that larger strain. Yeah, you're right, Gina. So I, I, I have to expect that it's going to take a out, or I'm not going to play. Because that's a real. So, so the way to think about it is, the more aggressive I think the entries are, the better I want the risk reward to be. Okay. Would it be in the back of your mind that the old door might hold price for a C pivot? Yeah, no, that's exactly, exactly. Well, I'm thinking, yeah, I guess I am thinking C. Yeah, I'm thinking somewhere up here is a possibility. Now, I could be wrong. Could end up here, could end up here. But I'm thinking somewhere in here is likely, right? I'm still surprised to see how well double the range works. It, it called the low. Absolutely, Weechi. You know, that Archimedes guy is... People should uh, write books about him. What would you What would you give that expectation? Oh, I think for most people, David, that's probably about a two. You, you mean the the entry down here, or do you mean here? What are you talking about? The door or the entry? Oh, taking out B. If it's going to turn, it's going to turn there, but I can't. I can't give it more than. I'd give it the same as a center line. That, that, so I'd say, in fact, let's think about this. It's ab as above, so below, right? Does, does that work? Hang on one second, Weech. As above, so below, right? That means that this is really the center line. So, in terms of median lines, we're talking about. We're going 80, now we're at 43, and that's about what I think about that area. If it's going to turn, it's going to turn at that area. But I can't go 80%, it's going to turn. I don't see the, the logic, because I don't see why people would sell here. 
it's not doesn't mean that they won't. It's just so often like double the range. It, it just happened to work. Now the high, I I don't see it here. I don't see it. I don't feel it. We got a lot of problems. We got this, and then we've got all of this consolidation in here. This doesn't look like free air to me. So I just don't feel it. Not enough for me to jump in. Doesn't mean I wouldn't take the trade if the if it was bigger than three to one. Doesn't mean I wouldn't take the trade. And if you think you can go up into this area, and I, I wouldn't laugh at you, or up here, and you're getting five to one or so, go ahead, take it. Can I ask why the low was not a pane of glass for you? The low is a pane of glass for me. You see me mark it B, right? Ouija? Okay, if it goes to blue, we could take our money and see if we get a new setup. Sure, absolutely. You could you could have your have your profit stop right here, have your uh, profit order right there, and then sit on your hands. You might get a pull back to this with a stop. Yeah, you've got to have good risk reward. The other thing is, it looks like it's trying to go parabolic. Okay. Now, this went parabolic. I'm always nervous if we get horizontal and then try to go parabolic and don't go parabolic I get a little nervous about being being in on that side again do you follow me but the price uh, I know what you're gonna say Wagey says but the pane of glass as in ignore the left of the pane well if I ignore it Ouija I don't have anything to measure so I'm not going to leave. That's why when David asked me about stops, and I have no idea, and I'm not going to even play that game. If you don't want to think about these, which is basically what I tell you, this is where it exploded right here, as far as I'm concerned. So it's, you're basically just going to double this. As far as I'm concerned, we've got... We do, if this is the painted glass, we've got this. And now where are we going to go? But you have to have, you can't trade in an absolute vacuum. I wouldn't go look, I wouldn't I wouldn't be thinking about this. I wouldn't. I'm not really thinking about this. The only thing I'm thinking about this, Ouija, is this seems like as above, so below. This is a likely area for us to run out of energy. That's all. So we can have concepts. Let me let me rephrase this for you. We can have concepts, but we can't take them to the extreme, to the absurd. Okay, we can, we can't trade in a vacuum. But I'm not going to lean on these perceived buyers that may become sellers or same thing up here. I'm just looking for, I have no structure. Price left me no option here because I have absolutely no structure, especially when this gets taken out. What do I have left? Nothing. Unless I look at the center line, which was formed by this high. So I, I've got to have some structure to work with and we're not building anything. I know I talk about once we start to take out a high, we're in good shape. The problem here is, is there any structure here? We are building a new controlling swing, but is there any structure yet other than a low? All we have right, is a slope line, which is not going to help us in any way, shape, or form. So we can't do anything. We can't even project at this point unless we take a look at this so we can either fold our hand and say I'm not going to trade or it's on our chart we it's not like I'm going to open up my chart so only the bars from here to here are shown I'm not going to rely on buyers or sellers here which is what I said to David or here but that's the only structure I have left this is nothing yet I have a bottom, and I like the bottom quite a bit, but because of the way this came out of the hole, see if we haven't left a nice high and a pullback. For, oh, here, here's a better example, Ouija. How about this? 
do you think I'm looking at this low? So somebody was talking about drawing a, uh, an inside median line. I wouldn't even bother. Once I think the bottom is in, I'm absolutely ignoring all of this. It's meaningless to me. Except when we tag that high, um, and that's just a general precept when you take out the last swing high, that confirms this bottom. That's the only way we can confirm this bottom. There isn't another swing high for us to, right? Make any sense? Again, I know everything, everybody wants everything to be black and white. Nothing is black and white. Nothing. The world is like that. You know, the older you get, the more you realize, shit, <laughs> nothing is sacred. There's only probabilities. Just ask Einstein. All right, so let's take a look and see what we got. Closing on our highs, closing on our highs, closing on our highs. Looking pretty good. Right at the center line, but closing on our high. So let's see what we get out of this. That's a nice rejection. So, David, maybe this is a good area to have walked away. Let's see what we got. We get a little bit of a pullback, but then right back at it. Right back at the center line. So, we'll see us working over this area. Now, what I want is a clean B, C to form. Another way I think if you are just marking the major pivots and the pane of glass just tells you the major pivot has been formed. Yeah, this definitely is the pane, okay? And it, I, I know most of you probably hunt A, then B, then C, but again, remember what I've said over and over again, especially if you draw by hand. Shane wants me to start giving classes where we draw by hand. The problem is I can't imagine. First of all, I'm not sure I want to do it, but second of all, I can't even imagine how the hell you'd do that, how I could actually film it and do it. But um, when you draw by hand, you actually, sorry, you actually look at the B, C, then you bisect it, then you go find your A, then you draw in your center line. That gives you the proper angle, then you copy it and copy it, right? So what you're really looking for is a nice clean B, C. So as I see this thing come out of the hole, I have no structure. So what I'm interested in now is a BC. So I need a C to form somewhere, anywhere. Well, yeah, Gina, as far as I'm concerned, BC comes first. I already know that there's a candidate for an A, right, by definition, because we went low, lower and formed a controlling swing. The B is the pane of glass. The reaction off the pane of glass in whichever direction is that C. Everybody with me? Probably not something that we have uh, talked about much, certainly not in market maps and here a little bit, but not too much. But if you think about it, B is the pane of glass, C is the reaction off the pane of glass, and it's what's going to give us the probable path off of the pane of glass, right? Does that make sense? Okay, well, hopefully there's going to be a lot of, t listen, even if I'm out again, I will be back, and there's going to be lots of times when you do hear things. It's not like I'm going to forget what I know. Okay, so I will continue to teach what I know, and hopefully, in fact, I'm sure of it. There'll be plenty of times when you say, oh, I've never heard that before. That's good. So, pane of glass, sorry, pane of glass, reaction off the pane of glass. Where is it going to end? Because that's going to give me a probable path of price. Okay? You like this session paired? Good. All right, so now here's our, it's not our first close, but it's a nice close above center. So we'll see if it leads to anything. 
And what do we get? Well, basically mirror bars and ooh. Huh. <coughs> That's an interesting bar. Is that enough to say C is formed? It's enough for me for at least to do this. Huh. Kind of similar to the first reaction. Okay, so let's see what we get. Yeah, because we did get this, right? So let's see what we got. Okay, that doesn't help me, so maybe it hasn't formed. And remember, I want to do it within five bars. Okay, so here's our thrust down, our pull back. Now we cracked the low. Here we came up, thrust down, and continued higher. Can you see the difference? Absolute difference here. They're subtle, they're small, but they're there. And again, we talked about this over here. See the significant low, the first pullback, which is higher. Okay, significant high. If I can grab it. Yep. And here's our pullback, and it's lower. And just get used to these. I'm not going to draw the upsloper because I'm not going to get long up here. So my eye is only going to be interested in this because I want to know if C's formed. I don't know if I'm going to get short, but what am I hunting for? I'm looking for BC. So I'm interested in this particular structure right here, this line right here. And I'm looking for that bar. This bar tags it for me right here. And let me tell you again why. When we finally we're still in the same area but we thrust down we pull back and leave a lower high and then break crack the low right see it that's the fifth bar would you draw the median line and now yeah I think we're there now this bar right here as far as I'm concerned gives us C I don't even know if this is worth drawing this way but I'll go ahead and do it anyway Now I've got C. So I went and you can draw from either of those tops. It doesn't really matter. It's not going to, with pixelation, it's not going to matter anyway. That's my median line. And I added something else to it. What do you think I would do? Right in the middle of this median line, we'd go... What? You're making it hard on me. Yeah, I'd modified shift it because we went parabolic, right? So now I've got my A, I've got my B, and I've got my C. Make sense? All right, let's see what price gives us. I've got a floor in here, but I have, it hasn't been tested. And this is, at the moment, this is the probable path of price. And this looks an awful lot if you haven't noticed it, it's two things. It's a door. And we talked about that looking similar. And sure enough, it's horizontal, right? 
and Ouija likes the way the handle cuts through. Okay, can you see the horizontal now? It might have been lost in us hunting for C, but we didn't make any progress. It ran right into a door, and we all went horizontal. And so, in terms of where we're likely to go, where do I have structure? Do I have structure above or do I have structure below? What was the reason you used the modified shift? Because we went parabolic right here. There's not one, there's eight, I believe Ouija counted it, there's eight bars that have lower closes, lower lows, lower highs. The quality of the top is better than the low, so I say the top is structure. That's exactly my reasoning as well, Ouija. I don't see any structure down here, but I have a door here, right? And my median line says the probable path is down. So do I think the high is likely to get broken, or do I think the low is likely to get broken? The low is more likely. Now, in terms of a trade, I'm not sure that C's in until here, correct? Now, if you're hunting a trade, it looks something like that. If you're dying to get short, and it would actually have to be a little bigger, but so let's let's think about it if you get to the median line uh, oh, that doesn't work if you get to the lower parallel it finally starts to work somewhere in around at prior lows so you have to be aiming for prior lows and I don't know if you get filled but that's what that would look like and say goodbye to that entry huh Hey, this is how you hunt it. Hang it above. Put a third of it above the door. Hang it up here. Can everybody see this? It's exactly what we did down here. Exactly what we did up here. Just hang it up there. And you've marked out your territory. Does that make sense? Don't think about chasing. Don't think about anything else. Just put, the meat, put, put it there. It's a trade or it's not. And in this case, good idea. No possibility for an execution. By the time you get confirmation, or in the sense that C is in, see, trading in here is trading in mush. It's not that they're not clues. Here's one of the clues right here. But I don't think it's enough to get short. Would this C be the shoulder in the horizontal area and no weak reaction occurred? Uh, I don't think this is a candidate for top, shoulder, weak reaction. I think this is just a door. Unless you, unless you were trading a higher time frame, or you know what I mean. This is this the here price just stopped, so that's why this is not an area that I probably be, would be hunting a trade personally, because I'd be selling. Let me put it this way, Aaron, you ready? I really would be entering on my stop, wouldn't I? So generally unlikely to take this trade and you know generally by the time you like it it's too late anyway so all right so let's see what we get here so far so good it's not I mean it's not leaving us any structure there's really not much to to work with typical soy meal now people have finally given it up. Now we blow through B, right? We blow through B. Start to slow down. Okay. We're 85% of the way in the median line down to here. We've blown through B. This is what we expected. So the reason why we want to think about the structure up here versus the structure down here, which is likely here. 
Did it help us trade? Not really because this structure is not really that conducive for a clean trade. Okay, take care, Perry. But as we get down into this area, what are we going to keep our eyes on? Nothing? What? Okay. Well, yeah, it's 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 more general than what than what um, Ouija and Aaron and Reese and even Scotty are saying. Gina's got it. We're looking for a low that then spawns a higher low. Now, it can be at the median line, it could be at the warning line, or it could be here. It is where it is. Okay, but you can see, can everybody see at this point that we have, and I said, bef I said before, it's important that we go parabolic. So we did go parabolic. Once we go parabolic, then we continue to monitor price. Now we don't have anything yet, but if we see a low and then a higher low, we're going to mark it and think about it. Okay? You with me? It doesn't have to go to the lower parallel. That is, for all intents and purposes, that's close enough for jazz, but it could go to the warning line. It could go to two warning lines, go to four warning lines. The key is, when does it make a higher low? Then mark it and find out if it's significant. You don't have to buy in that first higher low, but that'll set the tone. So, now we're, we're retracing, and that's interesting, but so I see this but I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in something that looks like a higher low. Now I'm at the median line. Then we touch the median line and get repulsed. Everybody see that? That's classic 80 to 43 reverse. See it? Is this what you're saying? First thing we need movement up or down parabolic right. We need horizontal, ideally price runs out of energy where it should, and we look for a higher low. We need buyers or sellers to be there. Um, yes, except I would say this. Sometimes you get horizontal and sometimes you don't. Um, let me rephrase that. Sometimes you see the horizontal, Aaron, first. And sometimes you don't see the horizontal until you, until you see the higher low. Horizontal is going to form, but at the moment, if you look at what's going on, do, let me ask you a question, Aaron. Does this look horizontal yet? Well, to me, it just looks like it's coming out of the hole, and it's got a nice slope on it. So. It's not what I would call classic horizontal yet. We will definitely eventually need buyers or sellers. We'll have to find buyers or sellers, but that'll be in price. So let's see Let's see what it forms. Maybe that'll clarify what you wrote. So we get to the median line. We get the classic rejection, and now we're coming down. We close on our low, and then look at the bar. We close on our low. Now look at the bar. And here's our here's our prior low. Okay. Take a look. With me? This is not a higher low. Because look, we're still climbing. 
Okay, you, you get you can't just say okay this is a higher low, but we're still climbing every all the way here. We're still climbing and making new highs. This reversal off the median line. Okay, here's another very subtle thing. This reversal off the median line should send us where? Actually, this is not subtle. This is classic. It should set us right to the lower parallel, which means it needs to get to the lower parallel. It's going to blow this bottom out, correct? So when this bar closes on its high, you should be scratching your head saying, not only did we not get to the lower parallel, we didn't even take out this bottom. So where's my line in the sand? It's going to look like this. You let me know if this doesn't make sense. If I can ever draw the damn thing. Uh, and I'm going to make it funky color. Does this line make any sense? I'm, I'm not thinking of opening, but that's okay if you... I, I might be thinking of Gopian on this one, Johnny, because we tagged the median line and we should take out this and this. So when this happens, if we have any upside movement at all, I guess I would be thinking of Gopian, Johnny. I, this wouldn't even tempt me. But this would right here. How about that? Okay, so David wants to know if I'm looking for a long entry. Um, I want to know what's in control. Now I told you I traded that this trade was a little slow, but um, I think I wanted to make sure that I understood what was in control because this is kind of messy. It's left us a lot of movement without much structure. So I'm going to wait until I see the whites of their eyes, so to speak, but it's not going to cost me much to wait. So here's my problem. If I get long here, Let's say price lets me get, get long right here. I mean, if I'm using two to one, I'm good at about here. I gotta almost make it to the median line. Not that we can't get there to get my three to one. Okay. So let's keep that in the back of the mind. If we can get in down here, we need to get to the upper parallel. You with me? No? Yes? Okay. Let's see let's see if price lets us in, first of all. And obviously that's the first question is, was there even an opportunity? No. Not at all. Now we're back at the median line. What are we going to do with the median line? So we never had an opportunity anyway. Now how's this look? Let, let's go back. Once this bar forms, this confirms this as the higher low, doesn't it? So and especially, boy, if you didn't like that, that definitely should ring your bell, shouldn't it? Try and draw them sooner. Try and draw them as soon as this one closes right here. But if you don't, when these happen, go ahead and draw it. There's no harm, no foul. It's just that you might have had an opportunity, for example, here to get long. But in this case, we never come back down anyway. That last buyer, fresh buyers. Yes, now we're seeing fresh buyers. So Aaron, your buyers have shown up, right? So where are we likely gone? Okay, upper parallel, but we don't have an entry, right? So am I thinking long? Am I thinking short? Why not put in upsloping media line? Well, at this point, 
Thank you, thank you for asking. This is my, now normally I'd be looking in, within five bars. I can't pick out this as a C. I can. But David, when I get the higher low here, I am absolutely going to draw this. And I like to do it within five bars, but I had absolutely no idea. Come with me. There we go. Until C was formed. Now, isn't it interesting? C is the same anyway. And it's not even a modified shift. Okay? So, once I see C, and that to me, uh, I gotta have a little one here, I guess I don't. It's this, it's, uh, what the? It's this little stuff. It's these little bitty catches that make all the difference in the world. This allows me to pick this as baby C and put in my new median line. So now I've got a down sloper and an up sloper. Yeah? So David wanted to know, am I going to go long? Well, I had never had a chance to begin with. And now I've, I've got a quandary, don't I? Reese says, I just see a range. That's kind of what I, I want to know. I need, I need a reason to trade, don't I? And right now, a range is no reason to trade. So, what do we do? We can flip over to another chart, or if we're interested in this, we can follow it. Mio moves pretty fast. So if you got an hour, a lot happens in an hour. So let's see what let's see what it gives me. I mean, it's got a head of steam on it, doesn't it? Okay, we're at the blue median line. We went from 80% to what? So I expect we'll stub our toe here a little bit. Or not. Now we're at the red upper parallel. I'm going to give this the retest right here. So we're not in a runaway mode, but we're still, we're above. We've zoomed, pulled back, and now we're high. We get to the red upper parallel, but close on our low. Everybody with me? Next bar will tell us a lot, okay? Did it tell us anything? No. Not yet. That's okay. We'll wait. So let's take this. Remember what we were looking for. We were looking for a thrust lower, a pull up, and then a break at that low, right? So we'll take this and we'll turn it blue and 12 is fine. Okay? Does that make sense? And sure, the energy points there. Don't break it. Don't break it. Well, it's nothing. Don't break it. We're right back at the upper parallel again. So I'm going to do this. Anybody know what I'm going to do? Nope. One. Here's our first test of it. Here's our second test of it. Is it going to hold? And then will it spawn three? Top, shoulder, etc. Okay? We don't have anything that looks like a door yet. Might get it, but we don't have yet. So, maybe I was a little quick, but 
here where you would get a reversal bar. And that definitely makes me like it. Now, this is higher than here. So, you saw how I was a little early there. I probably would put this over here now and put this here and say, okay, here's the high. Does that make sense to anybody? I'm going to be looking for three lower highs. Okay, now we break through. Ding, 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 ding. So this bar right here has just set the tone for me. You see it? Now let's go through some logic. Uh, fresh sellers. Sure. Reese, if you change your mind, does it look anything like anything other than a range at the moment? I sort of see it. I can still see C as a shitty bottom and us in a range. Ray, Reese, that's where I'm at. Except, in the back of my mind, I still have this high or low. And this is so far the ultimate bottom and this is a higher low so I'm going to keep this in the back of my mind but I'm not liking that it's following the upper parallel down does that make any sense expanding pivots <sighs> okay let me ask you this this may become a pane of glass this may be the pane of glass but really isn't everything happening right between here So, I have to be a little careful about being too excited. Now, the good news is, the longer we stay in the big scheme of things, I'm not going to pull it in, but, you know, we're not making any big runs here. At, at some point, we're going to get range extension. Can you tell whether the quality of the high or the low is better? At this point, um, no. So, Ouija, do you think I'm ready to buy or sell? Neither way, right? I want some information, right? So, let's let let's see what price gives us. I think that's enough. Okay. So we continue lower. Turn back up. Back at the median line, or the upper parallel, sorry. Starting to sprint higher. Mirror bar. Ding, 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 ding. I'm likely to have marked this too soon again, but just for the heck of it, I'm going to mark this as two. And looks like two now. Which means I'm going to expect this. Now, might not hold. And by the way, if the bottom holds at all, that has to be a one, but we'll come back to that later. All right, let's see what we get. We make a new low, close on our low. Everybody with me? But a mirror bar. Back at the upper parallel. Back at the upper parallel. Through the upper parallel. Back through. And I'm liking this as three. How about you? If 
everybody with me? Okay. Now I'm going to I'm going to ask you a question that Which median line is dominant here? And you need to think about to answer the question in this in the sense of what I'm looking for, I need you to think about frequencies. We says red. 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 And why are you basing it off of red? Because one, two, three is red frequency formation. Okay. Especially the sliding parallel. Okay. So I'll put the sliding parallel in for you. But why are you? Is it because of the tops? There's no right or wrong answer here, folks. I just want to show you something. I said I wasn't going to do anything tricky. I guess this is kind of tricky, but... Blue, says Scotty. More touches. Just the one, two, three, says Reese. Okay. Watch this, Reese. If I take the blue... And... Yeah, undershoot and overshoot on the blue. Okay, I like that, Ouija. Good thought. Um, I'm going to shift perspective on the blue for you, okay? And there's a reason, but we're not going to go into the physics of it. But take a look at this. Blue doesn't look so bad now, does it? So its frequency in another perspective is carrying the highs as well. Now, would I expect you to do this every time you draw a median line? No. Just an exercise in thought, that's all. Okay? Anyway, red and blue if we're looking to get short we don't really have actually what do we have at this point we have contracting pivots don't we to just speed it along rather than go Socratic would you all agree we're inside that one swing okay so let's see what price gives us I'm not going to go short here because I've got the lower parallel right here. I've got the prior low, which has been busted, but I've got this right here. None of this is now going to, when we were up here, now it's not going to give us three to one. So we're speeding lower first time. So that's nice. Now we get to the lower parallel. See it? And we're going from 80 to... Forty-three, and take a look at the bar that is spawned. When I when I see it, the very first thing I think is now we've had a number of cascades to the downside. We haven't really had any runs to the upside, have we? So if range extension is going to catch people leaning the wrong way, what's the likely side they're going to be on? They're going to get caught short. Okay. 
Now you can take this trade if you want here. Uh, yeah, you can take this trade here. You can almost take this trade here. Your problem is you're going to need at least this to get 3 to 1. All right. This one's not that easy either, but I'm going to leave all of my risk. The moment I see this, I'm on my second higher low. And I'm starting to see this type of extension. So what I can imagine is this, this, if we break through this three, I kind of expect all hell to break loose. Yes? No? Ouija, can you restate that for me? And I'm not going to reach at all. I'm going to leave all my risk down here because I know I'm playing with fire. Asking for a bar rating out of 100. Uh, I mean, shoot, I'd, I'd like it if it looked like this. You know, I'd like it if it... But the nice thing about this bar is it won't take that much of a swing back down for me to get long, right? Why are you able to forget about stop below C? Well, I'd love a stop below C, but there's no way for me to trade there. This is a, this is either, okay, ready, Dave? And this is a tough one. Okay, hang on, David. Yeah, if it gets tested, what what's going to happen to me? Because that's the key to this trade. If C gets tested, I'm gone, right? So I have to be willing to put a stop on the table and say, okay, I have a higher low. This looks like a second higher low. If this is not a second higher low, you can forget about this low. I expect C to be tested. And frankly, I expect C to be gone because if this is not a second higher low, I expect to be slammed by this red down sloping median line. With me? You put your money on the table, you're right or you're wrong. Which is why I said you can go ahead and take this trade. But I like the risk reward to the upside. I think I can get 8 or 10 to 1 out of this. So that second higher low is a structured stop. Well, what do we used to call it? It's a binary stop. It works or it doesn't work. We're, we're, yeah, it's a binary trade. Gina, it's either structure, and I've nailed the structure just like Boom Boom does, or I'm totally wrong, and I'm willing to risk. Can I ask what made you finally pick a direction here? Yes, what made me pick the direction here is I have of the like, I, I have what I see. I've been trying to teach you to draw this higher low. Now I see a second higher low when this bar forms. And the risk to me, I would rate the risk to the downside as 3 to 1. I would, I would rate the risk to the upside as at least 10 to 1, maybe more. So I want to get as much risk reward out of a trade as possible. Okay, and I get not only a higher low and a second higher low, but I know these are close together and people find these more compelling. I like the extension than the pullback to a second higher low on a median line because I think that means the next one is going to be the same kind of flower. And if it is, it's going to blow through all of these stops. If it flowers like this, if I could just grab this and copy it from here, what's it going to do? It's going to hit these stops. It might even take out these stops. Does that make any sense, Ouija? So I'm, I'm, weighting the risk reward of the two sides. So this is not trading in the middle because you think it will go so much higher. I think I'll either get stopped out or this is going to be a 10 to 1 to the upside, Aaron. Yes. Is it also partly you see fresh buyers coming out from C? Well, that's what this is. Yes. 
and I think you'll see the same thing if if this is it the bottom here I think you'll see the same type of buyers here okay so I'm I'm again I'm weighing the potential risk reward the longer times between tests of the blue make it higher probability it's the impulse of the buyers versus look at the sellers here they're not getting much bang for their buck even here they're not getting as much here they're getting one straight impulse up and I expect the same kind of move here okay but often in a rangy type scenario here we often may get a decent secondary tertiary entry so the picking this as more explosive than many is such a fine read um, here's my problem Reese in a lot of ways this is a third entry think about it so if I try and enter over here I'm really entering look how far away I am from the low I mean I'm already at the point where I'm a little stretched emotionally about this low I'm already three handles away right so to me if I don't trade here the trades off and even here, Reese, I'm, 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 two or three bars away from going. I'm throwing in the towel and looking at it another day. Okay. It could be the weaker reaction low. Well, it better be the weaker reaction low. Otherwise, I'm dead. You explain why you can now set stop above controlling swing. Okay. Yes, but are you not in fact playing the bigger structure that starts at B? Um, no, I'm not. Actually, I'm not looking. You know what? I didn't hear. I didn't, didn't mean to move that line, but if you're wondering if it was coincident or that it was important that I had that line there. Um, no, uh, that's not enough either. I don't even, I don't care about that line. That line, those buyers got eaten. I mean, it's nice, might make you feel good, but I think in the scheme of things, it's really not, not important, okay? And, you know, I have, Reese, I have to tell you the truth. I, I don't think I've ever done any studies on that. Second, uh, you know, major lows that got busted with, I suppose you could look at this as a major wash, but it's not what I thought of at the time anyway I'll just be honest with you I mean I I should have just claimed it and said I'm really brilliant but it's not what I thought I'm just trying to be honest with you so what I thought was this is the last chance to get long and I just think the risk reward is three five eight times better to the upside than the downside I'll put a dime on the table for that with me and that's it I mean it's nothing more simple and, and I understand this is a binary stop but I'm anticipating that this is going to be structure if not I understand I'm gonna get stopped out if this gets broken I expect red is gonna hold sway and see he's gonna get blown out and I missed I got just got the side wrong okay so all right so let's see what happens binary stop after a long move down yep you got it Gina so the blue median line and prior highs are too close is blue median line enough of a target? Okay, so let's talk about targets. Great idea. So, what do you think about targets? We got. We've got the median line, we've got the upper median line, we've got all kinds of things. Aaron says you need a 10 to 1 or the trade is not worth it. I agree, Aaron, I'm looking for a 10 to 1. Reese says this should go at least double the red BC. I like that. So I need something that is a, a freaking big run, right? I'm not looking for 3 to 1. I'm not interested. I'm not really looking for 5 to 1. Not interested. 
blue upper parallel should be about double the range. All right, let's 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 investigate that. So let's do the easy double the range. I don't know what this is down here, but all right, let's do the easy double the range. I'm going to grab this low, and I'm going to go up to. I'm not even going to take the little noise on top, and I'm going to use pumpkin. And I consider that to be the range. How about that? I mean, we could go backwards if we wanted to and get a bigger range, but that's not really what we're supposed to be doing. All right, so double the range. There you go. And it is upper parallel-ish, isn't it? So... So risk in one, yeah, it's a 10 to 1. It's right at 10 to 1. I was sweating it there. Can I say that the first problem area is prior high intersecting with the blue median line? Yes, absolutely. This is a problem. But, Ouija, here's what I'm counting on. All of these people that sold in this area, plus the people that were still short, plus the people that got short here, when we start to peel back these highs, this thing ought to just take off. There should be no structure in here at all. Yeah? Again, I'm looking for this starting here, and I'm actually, I'm hoping when we start to take out the highs that this run doesn't happen until we start to take out the highs. So I'm looking for this. And I'm looking for it to happen about the time we start to take out the highs. So look where that puts us. It's going to take out all these. It's going to take this out. And it's going to get us pretty high. We're relatively close to home at that point, right? Actually, do you see some kind of degradation of the low at blue MLC? Uh, degradation? You'll have to explain what you mean. I, I like this. You don't like this low? You can explain to me why. How would you classify this trade? A median line retest or bottom shoulder weak reaction type or... Well, I would say that this is ready. So I haven't... It's a good question. I'm glad you brought it up. Why isn't this... It's stretched a bit. And I've already said this was a bar or two away from me saying, I'll see you tomorrow. But isn't this top... shoulder and it's stretched no doubt about it degradation of the low is as in not a 3d low and sellers are not getting paid with that low oh I see what you're saying yeah I I think I think this is a trap which is why, you know, when, when, I don't remember, somebody asked me about this being coincident with the median line. Yeah, I think it was Reese. Um, I'll give you that. I mean, I don't, we weren't down there and look at the closes. Um, so as a seller, I wouldn't be that satisfied, especially once we started to head up here. So I understand what you're saying. Um, median line, so what do you think about this as a shoulder reaction, Aaron? But it's also a median line retest. If you didn't get the bottom, sorry, not top. If you didn't get the bottom shoulder weak reaction bit, why not? Remember, I'm not in yet, right? Take a look here. I'm not in yet, right? So we can just dump this. So here's my test. Look at the nice separation. I'm looking to buy a retest, right? It works, and I'm glad to see the past few trades use such a stretched weak reaction. 
yeah. I'm not as wild about them when they're stretched, but, you know, you unfortunately do kind of get what you get. And in all of these cases, they've been median line retests. So, you know, I, I would like to spend more time talking about Amos's concepts because, yeah, uh, because they're so powerful. They're simplistic and really powerful. There's not a, you know, I mean, it's really just, really, it's just, if you could just count to three. All right. I mean, there's more to it than just a one, two, three, because we need a move. You know, we'd like horizontal. Um, somebody, I forgot to go back and do this. Somebody, I said, when we were here, and Aaron said, "Yeah, I kind of, I kind of think that's horizontal." Aaron, now watch. Now, does it look more horizontal? So sometimes you'll get the you'll get the low out of a sloped area, and then you'll see it and go, "Hey, that's horizontal, man." All right, so we come up here. Well, we measured out the range. Here's our three drives. Now we're pulling back to a weak reaction, and this is where you should be thinking about it, Gina, right there. And you can always say, you know what, that's too stretched for me, I ain't playing, or I don't like the risk reward, I don't think it can give me enough, but the moment it starts to break down, well, you can do this as well, if you, if you need this to help you, I guess I can't grab that. Right? And then, of course, three gets busted. Well, you don't even have to drop. Right? You need to buy into the fear. Absolutely right. You need to be fearless, Gina. So you, when everybody else is speeding up, you want to slow down. When everybody's panicking, you need to make hay, as my dad would say. This is exactly what I want. Thank you. Will you get stopped out sometime? Sure. You do it enough times though if the risk reward is really if you're good at perceiving risk reward and the risk reward is really eight nine ten to one you can be wrong a lot of times and make a lot of money but you can't put an order in now only once you see the retest and the line holds I wouldn't I wouldn't now you can because it's a median line but I wouldn't now because we're, we're so stretched from the past low in the shoulder you can because it's a tested median line but I would wait for the median line, okay. And if and if you miss it, there's only that one test. That's life. It's okay, right? Does that make sense, Aaron? If you miss it, you miss it. You know, if you want to be really aggressive, just have your order in at the median line. But and I used to trade that way before I started to do before 1999, before I started to do a lot of statistics. And it's better if you see the test and retest. That's where. I invented the test and retest because a lot of times this it looks good and you're like okay I, I'm gonna you know what look at it hold look at it hold I'm buying this median line because it's right there and this next bar goes like this and you get sick to your stomach it's not just that you lost money it's like how could I be so wrong so doing the statistics I know that if it holds those big zooms get taken out 80% of the time and those used to really kill me all right so we're gonna try and buy a retest. We close on a high. There's a nice failure. That shouldn't scare you, Gina. There's our mirror bars. We're pulling up higher at this point. I'm wondering if I'm even going to get an opportunity. We're almost to the upper parallel. Turn back down. Right back up to the upper parallel. It's like, oh, really? That bar gives me some hope. If your order wasn't in before, it's got to be in now. Pulling back down. I mean, it's just stretching me. Filled. Now here's where you find out whether you are wrong. Now, how many of you would have waited to see the test of the median line here before you put your order in? I know a lot of you would. 
let me see what it does here as it comes back down because maybe maybe you're saying because it left a lower high here okay so Reese says in this case yes David says yes Gina says yes Ouija says yes Th let me just say it again this is so stretched this is either the buy or it isn't okay so you can't wait for confirmation watch because that's what you're risking and you're not going to see this median line again and well let me put it to you this way if you do see this median line again do not buy it you are too far to the right you with me just let it go so once you make the decision here that this stretch is not too far for you and it's a binary entry put your order in on the median line follow it up and close your eyes until you can't afford it anymore all right or if it takes out for example if you didn't get long here and it left this high and now you and, and you didn't get filled and now it busted this high up here so you're up here but you didn't get filled at that point pull your order do you follow me the moment it takes out a swing high pull your order then you don't want to see the median line again does everybody understand at that point that means the buyers are not strong enough to deal with that down sloping median line you don't want anything to do with it that's really important there is a time to wave the white flag okay well so let's see what happens finally starting to catch fire nope we'll pull back now see if you come to this blue median line here you don't want this trade you don't want to be getting in now and there's parabolic see it you can move a stop if you want okay we slow down you know it's not gonna go straight up forever now if we pop the top this is a great stop first we got to take this top out I don't have any let me see if I can grab a median line for you guys I don't want to be too I'm, I'm being a little sloppy here well never mind that's what that was there we go so if we bust this then we can put our stop underneath here and here we go now put your stop right here I'll, I'll just use a go and a go now just run your stop right here when this gets popped makes sense anybody got questions about that you do need to protect your profits a lot of money sitting on the table folks now you can go for the upper parallel or I'm just going for Obviously, I'm filled, but it had plenty of room. It had about 15 to 1 in it. Never took any heat. So, you can look at this one. This one is a binary. This is either the bottom or, it's, or I'm just stopped out. If you are uncomfortable with that, you can't take the trade. That's okay. If you're comfortable with it, that's fine. What I want to stress is not necessarily forcing you to take this trade. Low, higher, low market and start hunting. Does flowering happen generally when most are leaning the wrong way? Absolutely. Flowering and range extension can only happen if people are in the wrong direction. And we have been cascading lower the entire way. 
this make sense? This is a little longer than I wanted to go, but um, I started a little late, plus my pace is a little slow. But we're generally going to be done at about 10 o'clock. I know it's late in the day for a lot of you. So I'm sure Mary at this point is at lunch. All right. Um, I So far, uh, just a teaching is good. All right. So just here's a health update. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the restroom. Then I gotta go call Mayo. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I gotta go call Mayo and see what's up with their. Uh, look at all the room we had. I mean, I took a third of the a third of the money off the table, folks. But I'm happy with the third. Um, I gotta go call Mayo and see uh, if I've made any progress. And as soon as I know, I will let you know. And it, like I said, it could be a week, could be a month, could be six months. I have no idea. Oh, good, Perry. Yeah, well, I, I'd rather do it, to be honest, Reese. I know everybody wants to see me just stay. I'd rather just get it over with and be done and be healthy. But it is what it is. There's, It's not in my hands at this point. It's whether a doctor thinks he can repair what's wrong and whether he thinks now is the time to repair it. So... And so far, it only looks like there's about one person in the United States that thinks he can repair it, So, at least right now. So we'll see what he says. Anyway, hope it was a good Monday. You guys have a good week. Uh, there is no evening this week, so I will see you all on Friday. If there's not going to be anything on Friday, you will know in advance. Thanks for your patience. Thanks for the good thoughts. I'm happy you're learning stuff, and I'll get the, uh, I'll get the recording up as soon as possible. All right, guys. Take care. I'll see you soon. Uh, where is this at? This is right here. Take care.